Alright, so this is the game of Parthenon, and this is essentially a resource conversion game. And um, what you're going to get is you're going to get your own set of starting uh, cards to play with. And you're going to get a uh, kind of like your island. You're one of these islands. Uh, so, for example, in this game, I would be Crete. So, my island would be, um, I don't know, out here somewhere. It's really insignificant to where that is on the board. And what I would get is a starting city. I would get this starting city of Crete here. And what you're trying to do is by the end of the game, you want to have all of these built all of these built, all of this built, and six of these um, eight structures built. So um, now when you get your starting city, they're all, they are a little different. Um, so for example, if I was playing a three-player game, these would be the three starting cities. And you'd see that in my city, I start with a grain village and an ore village. And so those are the two cards that I have to decide here, grain and ore. And those are the resources I'm going to produce. Whereas this player would start off producing wool and an olive. And this one would produce timber and grapes. So we have different starting resources. And that's because you can trade with each other if you so choose. And then additionally we can build other buildings. So in addition to building grain and ore, I could build more grain, more ore, or a great uh, structure. But notice I don't have wool, so I can never get, produce wool myself. And I don't have timber, so I can never produce timber myself either. I have So I have one, two, three. And there's actually six, so there must be something else I don't have. I don't have wool, I don't have olive, and I don't have timber. Those are the three resources I will never be able to produce. I will always have to exchange for those. And I can either exchange those with my neighbors or I could go sailing off into different parts of the Mediterranean and pick them up. Now when I demonstrate this I'm actually just going to demonstrate me playing and I'm just going to kind of explain what other people might do but this game takes up a lot of space and I really don't have space to set it up for three people. So uh, I'm going to start off with one fleet and you get one fleet to sail around. So I will either get to go to local markets, which are these three places, which have less risk if I sail there, or I could go to these more, I don't know, foreign markets or just more distant markets. And there's more risk uh, if I choose to go there. I have my starting production things. What's going to happen is each of these cities, each of these cities out here, they're going to start off with a harbor status card on them and so you're not going to know what is on this card but when you arrive at this city the harbor status card will be revealed and it can affect what happens when you arrive there so there is that random element to the game additionally it's played over three years and you're going to take the year one cards. You're going to just choose, there's six of them and you're going to take four of them and you're going to put them face down and then the other two will not be used. And at the, there's uh, four seasons in a year and so each season a new event will be revealed and so this is another random element to the game. Um, so you have, what you can do is you have these six basic resources. Grapes, grain, olives, ore, timber, and wool. And as you can see, as I mentioned before, I, produce, I can build structures to build three of those six items. And then you have more advanced goods. Uh, so rare commodities. These are known as basic commodities. These are rare commodities. Pottery, papyrus, spices, and tools. Those are other things you can get. Additionally, you can get gold. And then you can get these special cards here. Uh, I don't know how it's pronounced. Aegis cards or Aegis cards. I'm not sure. Uh, and these are kind of like they protect you from disasters that can occur. So what do I do with these goods? Well, as you can see, if I want to build an additional grain building, it's going to cost me one basic commodity. And if I want to produce another grain, it's going to cost me another basic commodity. If I want to produce an ore village, it's going to co cost me two basic co commodities, and I can't use two of the same kind. A great village would be three basic commodities, and I can't use 
any duplicates. And again, these are your basic commodities. And again, I produce, so I can produce, I automatically produce grain and ore, so I could right off the bat produce these two um, villages or these two production centers, or I could produce this, because I, I will start off with two commodities. So this is all basic commodity production. If I move down here, I can produce spices, which is the rare commodities, but I could be someone who produces spices. And this is going to cost me six basic commodities pr to produce these spice workshops, and that's one of each commodity. And so I'm going to have to be able to obtain one of each of these and then convert them into spice workshops. Additionally, I can make a marketplace. It's going to cost me a pottery, which is a rare commodity, plus a gold. This is spice plus a gold. Uh, this is papyrus and a gold, two gold, three rare commodities, none that are duplicated, a tool and a gold, and then I have, you know, I have the shrine. I can make an additional shrine for the same cost or an additional uh, harbor for the same cost. And lastly, I have to produce wonders. And what you do is to produce wonders when you go and trade in Athens you can take a wonder plan which is randomly determined and then you will find the appropriate wonder here in that deck. Uh, additionally, there are different philosophies you can adopt. If you build a academia, academia right here, if you build one of those, then you're going to be able to adopt a philosophy. And these are six different philosophies and they each give you a special benefit. Uh, you can, if another opponent adopts a philosophy, there is a way to pay them money to use their philosophy power. Each person gets this kind of uh, structure card of the phases. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten phases to around four rounds or four seasons to a year and three years that are done. So what's going to happen at the beginning is each player has a card like this. And it has the city on the back, but they all look the same on this side. So you're going to take these cards, you're going to mix them all up, and you're going to randomly draw one. And you're going to see what city is revealed. So, let's just say it's my city. Crete was revealed, and I am going to get this special token. And what this does is it will allow me, uh, as these events get revealed, you're going to be able to resolve them in any order you want. The person who has this card is going to determine the order that they are resolved. Uh, so anyway, we'll just say I was randomly, though it wasn't random, given this card. And so the board is set up with the things. Year 1, we're going to reveal Event 1. And what do we have here? All right, Ionian Merchants. Every island is visited by merchants from Ionia during the event phase which is this phase. These merchants pay any one basic commodity for each of your grain or olive commodities. Alright, so I am going to be um, I'm going to have pro be producing ore and grain. Now this event was revealed before the production phase so this isn't going to affect me yet but in year two this can affect me. So. I'm going to be producing ore and grain. These trade for what was it again? These grain, so or olive. All right, so I'm going to be producing grain. So, if for any reason um, I hold on to a piece of grain at the end of year one, at the end of this phase, and I have it at the at the beginning of the next phase, I will be able to trade it for any other one of these six basic commodities. All right, but anyway. So the event phase is done, revealed the event, it doesn't apply yet, I can't do it because I don't have any production yet. Now we go into the production phase. I have two production buildings, so I will be producing ore and grain. So that means I get an ore commodity and I get a grain commodity. So now I have these two commodities. And all the other players will get whatever commodities they produce. Next, island trading. What can happen now is me, and any other of the actual human players that I would be playing with, we can start making proposals to each other like you would kind of in Catan. You know, I'll trade you a grain for a grape, or I'll give you a grain and an ore for a wood, or what have you. You can 
trade commodities. So let's just say none of my opponents want to trade. It's early in the game. There's no real benefit to trading at this point anyway. So I have my two commodities. So we everyone passed on trading with each other. So now we're going to journey. So now we have one boat and we can build up to three ships. Um, you have this deck of cards of all the things you can build, which are pretty much summarized right here, except for a couple things. So if I want to build an additional fleet, it's going to cost me one gold. And then if I want to build a third fleet, it's going to cost me two gold. And everything else that's in my deck is explained here on this sheet. So if I wanted to build a second fleet, I would have to get gold. Well, how do I get gold? Well, I would have to look here. These are trading markets. The neighboring lands are, this is the chart for there, and that would be going to these three places, or I can go to foreign lands, which are these three places. Now, if I want to get a piece of gold from a neighboring land, it's going to cost me four basic commodities, and I only have two, so I'm not going to be able to do that this turn. However, if I go to a foreign land, I can tra uh, exchange two basic commodities for one gold. So it's cheaper if I go to the foreign lands to do this. However, there is more risk, and I'll explain that in a moment. So um, what I could do is I could not trade anything. I could just hold on to these commodities because maybe what I want to do is build more buildings. So let's just say I let's just say everybody does that. So we skip. Uh, we sk nobody trades. So then that's going to skip the hazard phase, the fleet phase, and return phase, and just go straight into the build phase. So what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to spend my two commodities. I spend this one basic commodity to build a grain village and this one to build another grain village. So then I just go to my deck, and here's one grain village, and here's another grain village. So these are going to go to my production area. And my commodities that I spent to build them are going to go back over here. And is there anything else I want to build? I don't have anything else to spend to build. So then the build phase is over. Discard. Uh, if I have too many cards left over in my hand, I have to discard. I think you discard down to three cards. Uh, but I don't have any cards left. Then you go to the Archon phase. All right, this is where uh, people will take their cards, and I have to give my card to another player in the game. And each other player has to give their card to another player in the game. And what happens is whoever ends up with the most of these cards is going to be rewarded this uh, token here, which is the person who determines how these events are uh, done. If everybody ends up with equal number of these cards, let's say I give this to the player to my left and that person gives this to the player to their left and the player to there gives it to me and we all each have one, then we're going to determine who gets this like we did in the beginning. You're going to take them all, you're going to put them in a pile, mix them up, and you're going to draw one, and look at that, we drew Crete, and so I get this card again. And that is the end of Season 1 of Year 1, and now we will go into Season 2 of Year 1. So, you're going to flip the next card, and this says Drought. Lack of rainfall forces the islands without stored up wine to spend all their goods to survive. Every island that does not reveal a grapes commodity during the event phase loses all of its commodities. Alright, well, I don't have a grape to reveal, so I didn't keep any commodities, so I'm going to lose all of my commodities. Well, lucky for me, I spent them all, so I don't lose anything. Had I held on to them, I would have lost them unless, um, unless I had a grape. Alright, so that was the event phase. Oh, and then now here's this one. This is the This other one would be resolved now, but I don't have anything to exchange, so... Nothing's going to happen. Uh, so then we move into production. All right, this time now I'm going to produce an ore and three green. So I get an ore card, and I'm going to get one, two, three green cards, and all of my opponents would get whatever they produced. Island trading, this is where I can go and say, you know what, I have a lot of green. Maybe somebody has timber, and I want to get timber because maybe I want three different basic resources so that I could build this grape village and maybe I want to build a grape village because there's this threat of a drought or something like that. 
But let's just say nobody exchanges since I'm not playing the other players. So these are the commodities I'm stuck with. And we go to the journey phase. Alright, so now I'll actually show you the journey phase since I have more commodities to work with. So I get to take my ship and I get to send it out and choose where do I want it to go. Do I want it to go to one of these three close places or do I want it to go to one of these three far places? So let's just say I'm going to go to this close place up here. I'm going to go to Athens. And let's say I have another opponent who's going to go down to Egypt and another opponent who's going to go down to uh, Carthage, down over here. Alright, so this is the journey phase. So we're on our journey. We're sailing out to these three places. Now is the hazard phase. So if anybody went to one of the three local places, you're going to turn over a hazard card. And you're going to see what happens. So here's another random event. So I turn this over and look at that safe journey. So I made it safe, nothing happens. This is put in a discard pile. And now we go to the people going to the distant lands. And then for the distant lands, you're going to reveal two hazard cards instead of one. So there's more risk. But again, according to this, there's also more reward. So card number one, grape surplus. All right, fleets trading in or trading for grapes in this harbor. Oh, I chose the harbor status card, wrong card. All right, hazard card. Safe journey. All right, so far they're lucky. They get a safe journey, and now we will draw a second card. And second card is pirates. Every fleet must choose half of its commodities to discard, and you round up. All right, so if these people were taking two or more commodities, they would um, lose them. Now you can protect yourself from this by getting some of these special cards here, and I believe it's this one here, the warship. You may reveal this warship with a fleet to allow the fleet to avoid effects of a pirate hazard or a blockade. So, to avoid this pirate hazard, somebody would have had to have obtained this special card here. And how do you get this card here? Well, you have to build one of these buildings. I think if you build the harbors, um, that will allow you to get the warship cards. Um, one of these lets you get army card and one of them lets you get the Poseidon card and they just these, these just have different benefits. Poseidon, you may discard this card from a fleet to allow that fleet to ignore the current hazard card and draw a new hazard card which only affects that fleet. So um, if I had this in possession and that pirate card came up and I didn't have a warship card I could play this which would allow me to discard the pirate card and for myself only I would see well what's the next hazard and look at that, I would have had a safe journey, and so this card would have gotten me out of trouble. Uh, or, additionally, I could have an army card. During the production phase, each army can double the production of one village. So, you know, maybe I wanted, since I'm producing all this grain, if I had this army card, I could use it to produce twice as much ore. Uh, you may also reveal this army within a fleet to allow that fleet to avoid the effects of tribute harbor status. And we'll see if that comes up here. Because we have these random events that are going to be revealed. So we just did the journey phase and we did the hazard phase. All right, So these players had to discard half of their resources and I had a safe journey. All right, so next uh, that we're at the harbors, we're going to reveal what happened. So for me, What's going to happen is we'll see what this card says. So anyone for the rest of this year who goes to Athens, they will now know that this is going to happen when they get their harbor fleet fees. Every fleet must immediately discard one commodity of its choice in order to trade here. All right. Well, uh, oh, the other thing I didn't mention is when you go, um, when you're going to go trade, you have to choose what commodities you're taking to trade, and then you have to take those commodities and put them face down under your ship. So that way when a hazard card comes up, so had I had I put all four of these cards here, and if I was going to a distant land like these people and I had to discard half my cards, then I would take these four commodities and I would choose two of them. These aren't my commodities. These are my commodities. I would choose two of them and discard them, so maybe I get rid of the two grain and keep these two. 
I, but I didn't go to a foreign land. I went to a local place. So I have these four commodities with me. And actually, I wouldn't even take all four of them. I would just take, I don't know, what would I take? Neighboring land, two basic, get me one basic. I would just take two grain, and I would hold on to these two commodities back at home, and I'll explain why in a minute. So I would have taken these two grain commodities with me. And what was this again? What was the effect? Uh, every fleet must immediately discard one commodity if it's in order to trade here. All right, so if I want to trade there, I would have to get rid of one of these commodities. So I would have to get rid of a grain. And so that would go back there. Now, having one commodity, I'm not going to be able to trade anything there. So there's, like, really no reason. F I could say, well, then I'm not going to trade and keep both commodities. However, there is something I'm going to do there. So I'm going to get rid of a commodity for a reason, which I will explain in a moment. Let's see what happens here. For this guy, he goes to this harbor. And look at this, olive surplus. All right, so fleets trading in or trading for olives at this harbor must use the following trade value. Uh, you could turn in four, since they have a surplus of olives, you're not going to get much for giving them olives. So four olives will get you one other basic good. Um, but now if you turn in one basic good, you will be able to get um, two olive cards. So had I gone there, I could exchange, you know, one wheat for two olives, which is a really good trade because otherwise it would have been a one-to-one -one trading ratio in a foreign land. And now it would be a one for two. Had that come up in um, in the neighboring land, instead of doing two for one, it would have switched one for two. So that would have been a nice benefit, but I don't get there. But now I know that if I want to start going here in the future, if I want to start gathering olives, um, then I can start going here to do that. And this person, what happens when they when they arrived at this harbor? It said. All right, wool surplus. All right, so it's basically the same thing as the olive one except for wool. They have a lot of wool, so they don't want wool. So it's going to take four wool to get you one other thing. But they're willing to give away that wool because they have so much of it that you can give them one item or something else. All right, so they do their stuff there. I'm going to do my stuff in Athens. So why, if I had two cards, why was I willing to give up one to... Um, to still be able to trade in Athens. Well, if you go to Athens, you can get you can get your first uh, wonder, and you have to build two wonders. The first one you get is free. The second one you're gonna have to pay one gold for the plans, uh, and you can only get them at Athens. So if I want to be able to get my plan, I have to be able to trade there. So I was willing to sacrifice a good. And then what happens is you just randomly draw a wonder card, and this is what I'm gonna be able to build. I'm gonna be able to build the Carry-on or whatever this is called. So then I'm going to go into this pile and I'm going to find that card. So where is that card? All right, here's that card. And so this is going to be built over a series of stages. So first, what I'm going to have to do is, uh, at the start of the island trade phase, pay one other island for basic commodities. You may not trade with that island for the remainder of the season. So if I give another island four basic commodities, I'm going to go from the under construction phase to the partial construction phase. And then once I'm in the partial construction phase, at the start of the island trade phase, pay one other island six basic commodities. You may not trade with that island for the remainder of the season. So then once I give that island six basic commodities, which is essentially one of each of these, Though it doesn't say no duplicates, so it looks like I could probably just give them a bunch of one thing. And I produce a lot of grain, so that's probably what they'll get is a lot of grain. Then it will be complete. And once it's complete, it gives me some advantage. So it says each season, and remember there's four seasons in a year. Each season at the start of the production phase, you may choose one type of basic commodity to be produced at twice its normal rate on all islands for the remainder of the phase. Armies have no additional effect on villages producing these commodities. So that would be the benefit that I would have for building this structure. But right now it's just at the under construction phase. But at least I know what I'm building towards and I know what I have to gather. I know I have to get four basic commodities to do that. All right, so everyone's done their trading. So they all return. So all the boats go home. So these go back to their people and my boat comes back to my dock. And now we build. Alright, so I didn't exchange this goods, so now I have three goods still left over. 
And so what can I do with these goods? Well, I could turn in two different goods to build an ore village. So then I would just go to my deck and I would find my ore village. And I'm going to build that, which means I'm going to turn in these two goods. And now on the next uh, production phase, I'm going to produce five goods. And now I have this grain left over, so this will just be uh, a leftover grain for me. Now what's probably going to happen is since I don't have any grapes, the drought's going to affect me. I'm going to end up losing this commodity. Had this been grapes, it would have saved me. Let's see. Yep, all right. So that is the build phase. I'm done building. I built an extra building. Discard. I don't. I only have one card left. I don't have to discard anything. The Archon phase. So this is where we all pass each other and somebody will become the new Archon, which means they'll get this. And then you start over and you just reveal the year three event. All right, which would be this. Um, and you're just going to go through. So I have one, two, three, four, five of these buildings built. I have, so that's one, two, three, four, five. I just need to build one more to have all six of these buildings built. I have my plans for my one of these two buildings that need to be built. And I still need to build, build these two and these and, well, six of these. Um, after the year, any of these cards that are flipped up would disappear. They would be replaced. Um with new cards, but the ones that stayed down would not be replaced. But you only do that at the end of the year. So as of right now, these would just stay out here so we all know what's going on. And um, that's kind of what you do. You're just doing resource conversion to build these buildings. I do enjoy resource, resource conversion games, so that is appealing to me. Maybe it's appealing to you. Um, I am not a big fan of randomness. So the things I don't like is I could, you know take my commodities, I end up somewhere, and because I turn a card, you know, like I have to get rid of half my cards, or maybe some hazard comes along, and, you know, it's not a safe journey, but there's a storm, and um, what happens here? Fleet with the most cargo discards everything. So if I was traveling to an island and I had more cargo than everyone else, uh, you know, I would lose it. Uh, so there's different hazards, so, you know, the pirate attacks, whatever. So that is something I'm not a fan of because I don't like the randomness factor. Um, but if you don't mind that and if you feel it plays into the theme of, you know, you're exploring, you don't know what's going to happen when you're exploring and it does play into the theme, you might be attacked by pirates, so on and so forth. And it plays into the theme and, uh, and whatnot. So anyway, that's kind of an overview of how the game works in case you're interested.